A very good evening everyone who are with us in this webinar today. We wish everyone is safe and healthy during these trying times. My name is Naresh Paul and I am the program director at TCS Ion Academy channel and your host for today's session. It is my pleasure to welcome each one of you to a very significant webinar on best methods to evaluate students online learning. Student assessment has changed in the new millennium and it is at the core of education. Teachers and parents use test scores to measure a student's academic progress. Institutions trust on these scores to assess the quality of their educational system. And government and the private institutions use these same metrics to determine students' learning. Assessments are about more than just grades. When meaningful and well-constructed, they help students gear up for success by changing them to reflect, interact, and apply their knowledge to answer questions, solve problems, and communicate information. These are a number of practices you can use to evaluate students mindfully. The best method will vary based on learning needs and objectives. And to know more about assessment and evaluation online, we have with us a very special guest who is going to share her thoughts and expertise. It is my pleasure and honor to welcome and introduce our guest speaker, Ms. Yashika Bharadwaj. Ms. Yashika Bharadwaj is the principal of KR Mangalam World School, Vaishali, Delhi, NCR. She has 25 years of experience in educational sector, a vibrant, inquisitive, and perpetual learner. She secured the gold medal in her bachelor's as well as her master's degree in education. She has authored several books, such as The Road to Become an Officer and Gentleman, Pravas, The Flight of Falcon, Educational Opportunities Offered by the Army. She has also written several articles for journals such as Swagat and The Cavalier. She has been appointed by the CBSC as an observer for inspections and examinations, as a mentor for implementation of academic strategies and has been a CBSC counselor for the past eight years. She has also conducted several workshops and in-service training sessions for teachers, both within the country and abroad. She has been appreciated by South Asian Association of Regional Corporation for her efforts in environmental education. So a very warm welcome is Yashika ma'am onto the show. Thank you very much, Naresh. Yeah, it's always awkward to listen to someone else speaking about you. But thank you for those humbling words. Thank you very much, ma'am. Dear viewers, we want this session to be as interactive as possible. So I would like you to remember at any point of time, if you have any thoughts, questions and comments, please feel free to type them in the chat window. Please do mention your name along with your organization's name and city to help us contextualize the questions, we will try and address the most valuable questions during the session. Without further ado, let's kick off the session. My first question to Yashika ma'am. Today's diverse classroom, it is as important for teachers to have different ways of assessing students as they do with teaching them. So what are the end goals of better assessment? How can teachers harness the results from more effective assessments to improve their teaching? Uh, thank you, Naresh, for a very interesting question. And I must start with uh, mentioning that there, when there was a survey conducted amongst the teachers, and this is common to teachers across the world, they love the job. It's not a job for them, it's a vocation or it's a calling. And they love the interaction in the classroom where they are imparting knowledge to the students and it's a joy, I've been a teacher myself, to see the children actually soak up all the knowledge that you're, that you're giving them and inculcating in, in them a desire to want to know more. But the one thing that the teachers say that puts them off is testing and assessment. Because they say that the joy of giving, sharing knowledge is completely different to when you have to have it tested as to whether your teaching was good enough or whether the students' learning was good enough. And a lot of teachers here who are listening to this webinar, it's, you know, like a fantastic patissier or a baker who's making a wonderful cake and he presents it to you beautifully and he needs a feedback. 
and he wants to know what his cake tastes like. But as they say, the proof of the pudding lies in the eating and you have to test it. You have to taste it. And the most important thing about assessment that we often don't pay enough attention to is the feedback. Mm -hmm. Because the yes. purpose of all assessment is actually feedback, whether it is to the teacher from a principal's perspective or to a student from the teacher student perspective. As you rightly mentioned, there are millions of ways of teaching. Any mm -hmm. particular chapter, if you have 10 teachers, 10 teachers may choose different methods, use different techniques, use different tools to teach the students. Similarly, there are different ways of assessment. But the assessment, we must remember, should be such that it caters for all the students. It has to be very balanced for the academically gifted and the ones who are struggling or are the lower achievers. And this differentiation must reflect in the kind of assessment that you are making. Now, this particular period has been very challenging for all of us. When we've had to move from the chalk and talk method to virtual teaching, to online teaching, where we've become technology buddies, almost trying to be at par with this new generation that is here. But we must remember that this generation of students and learners is coming to us to be put into a world 14 years from now. Mm -hmm. About two years ago, we could not envisage that we'd be teaching like this or communicating like this. Probably TCS may have called me over a cup of coffee and we would have had this discussion with the, with the participants there, but we are right. doing this online. So yes. even when we had the World Economic Forum planning its sustainable development goals, for education, they had said that 65% of the jobs that these students would be taking 14, 15 years from now don't exist as on date. Mm -hmm. So we have to have a tremendous vibrant mode of assessment and the methods of teaching and the methods of assessment must be the same. Your point in the question for goals of better assessment was we must remember what is the purpose for assessment. Assessment is of three types. Either your assessment for learning, assessment of learning and assessment as learning. Now, most of us are very familiar with assessment for learning and assessment of learning where assessment for learning becomes formative and it is more for the teacher to know how well her teaching has been going on. Assessment of learning is more summative. What the students have learned or what they have understood by the end of the chapter, by the end of the week or maybe a unit test, a Monday test, a half yearly exam. But then you also have assessment as learning where there is a self assessment and a lot of these wonderful apps that have come about. I myself am learning German all over again from Duolingo and there it is assessment as learning because you've got these tests as you go along and you yourselves judge where you are going. And yes. as I said, the, the purpose of assessment is always feedback. It is a way of looking at how the class is progressing and how the teacher is progressing. And the marks are not the be all and end all, but the marks yes. are simply a guide. Because for a teacher, it's very important to know which level of students have attained what level of mastery in the particular topic. So mm -hmm. once she, how does she know? She cannot be subjective and say that, okay, I like this student. So according to me, he's very intelligent or she's very intelligent. But when you have a test and an innovatively created test, a teacher can actually evaluate and see for herself that these are the stragglers. I need to work with these students. And there are times when for us as principals, you see the score of a class and you see that the entire class has not done very well. Now, in this particular scenario, it gives us a feedback that there is some disconnect taking place over here because if the teacher is competent to teach, then there's some difficulty she has faced in actually delivering the knowledge to the students itself. And for the students, we are all aware because all the time, the peers, the parents, the family, everybody talks about how many marks did you get? So it's, it's an evaluator for the students too. I think that should cover most of the points, the three points that were there in your question. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Quite right. I mean, you have rightly you know, set the stage. And uh, we have started you know, gaining the getting the questions also. But before taking up the question, I would like to ask the 
uh, second question and uh, would like to club them and the same question has been asked uh, almas husain from krishna public school and uh, sujit kumar from nk bagod bergodia public school they would like to know what effective technology tools could be most helpful online faculty members for assessments which can be used to evaluate and assess students learning okay in fact uh, you know when as principals i've yes. been head of a prince of a cbc schools for over 20 years now we've always been wanting our teachers to uh, be hands on with technology we move them to ms office by preparing their worksheets by preparing their excel charts by using powerpoint presentations we provided smart boards in the classes we really wanted the teachers to be techno savvy because this generation of students that we have are actually born with gadgets in their hands and i learned how to operate and the the audience might um feel a little um, you know that it's i'm being flippant about it but i learned how to audio search on a mobile from a 3 and a half year old little boy he says auntie aapko ye bhi nahi malum so this lot of students had to be approached differently and when this pandemic struck covid was actually a catalyst for transforming teachers into being using technology as a support to actually using uh, technology as an asset or a complement to their teaching and the one area where maximum transition has taken place is that in teaching so this question i get very often from teachers as to how can we enhance our teaching tools because initially when we moved into uh, taking online classes it was all a question of simply taking powerpoint presentations but now there's so much available the in fact two days ago for in the times of india there was a school that advertised itself as no green board no black board only cyber board so the whole world of education is changing if you would yes. allow me to uh, share a couple of slides perhaps mr Please. husain i can help you out with subject specific uh, tools that could also be utilized for assessment by you in your class uh, may i uh, be allowed to share yes, my yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Just Please. do that. So uh, I'll very quickly take you through this. These I was Please. the presentation was there because this is the question I'm asked very often as to how to go about it. And these are a few tools that are there. I'll take you through it subject wise. This, of course, is for social science where you've got Kaggle and you've got Padlet, Nearpod, and Google World Wonders. Of course, is just a way to keep your students uh, involved. And then you have Instagram. Instagram and Kaggle. are two mind map creators and instagram was actually phenomenal i will show you an example of the same when you use these i'm not going to talk about individually each one of these because it's written on the on the screen and you've got your uh, uh, uh notes also that i have given you over there that you can see it and the address as well but i'm going to tell you that you can use every one of these not just to enhance your teaching but you can change this or use it to make it for assessment this for example was something called easily.com and you can create an infographic while you're teaching but while you're assessing if you've taught a particular topic you can ask the students to create an infographic this now is a new word earlier we used to say design a poster but it's not design a poster it's an infographic now you may see that all these letters that are written here are written written in latin now these are pre existing uh, templates that are there for infographics students can use the same or they can create their own and all these tools i repeat all these tools i'm sharing with you are totally free of cost so if you use easily.com which was given on the top of the screen you can ask the students whatever topic you have taught to convert it to an infographic put things over there and ask them to present it so here you've switched tables you've got actually something called flip teaching that is taking place and this was what a mind map looks like in instagram once again kaggle is also there and you can use it to use the existing ones that are there but you can also ask students to create something like this while you were teaching it the beauty of this was here which is the difficulty level where if you are teaching about beethoven 
and if this difficulty there level you were to click and drag towards abc it would give you information relevant to a kindergarten level but if you go towards einstein it would give you a lot more information there was similarly the english apps that you could use not just to teach but also to assess are given on uh, the screen for you the most interesting ones i'll take you to are two which is here the pixton and tundu where whatever you are teaching can be converted into a comic strip and dialogues being given the images are already there so what you can do for an interesting assessment which is different which is engaging and which is fun now i remember growing up and tests were never fun and tests were never engaging we sat in a room with a pen and paper with our heads down and we wrote but here you have the world opening up in front of you where you are asking a student that here's the tool that's available convert this poem into a comic strip or a, a work of fiction into a comic strip it puzzle allows you to work with video clips so if you've got a video clip going on it can be paused in the middle and a question asked based on what the students have seen and english teachers i've been an english teacher myself you have the entire world available to you as far as english literature is concerned for the plays and the uh, video clips that are available for you and you can easily embed your questions in these and as i'm rushing through these you can perhaps take a screenshot and understand it later as you use it this is an example of um, the comic strip maker where you can just click and drag so you just click an image from there drag it here and place a dialogue over here which the students can then talk about and this is the word wall where in english if you are teaching them something ask them to give one word answers put them all in a cloud like this and ask them to talk about it so you are assessing their communication skills through something which is interesting and it's great fun because the students look around to find where is the word that they had given this is an interesting strategy again where you can give the students in any language french hindi german any language at all where you give them an eight point guidance where you've got a main character one word two words to describe the main character three to describe the setting so you're giving them some kind of a lead ask them then with these this pyramid of 1 to 8 words develop your story so not only have you given them guidance you're also assessing them at the end on the quality of story and they're sharing with each other which is very very important this was for mathematics a few apps that are available and you can actually as you're speaking if you say 2 pi r it will actually type it out for you and you can use calculations with tools that are available like this now imagine if you were to give the students a task an assessment task where they it's it's an online task where you ask them to draw a circle of a radius of let's say 5 cm ask them then to increase it to 10 cm remember in a classroom scenario you would be giving them a sheet of paper they'd be using a pencil and eraser and a compass and doing it here it's available for you online and your lesson your assessment your evaluation can be that much faster and more interesting these are some science apps that are there in a classroom environment we can rarely take temperatures up to 200 degrees if we need to but here when you've got your simulations now you may think that ma'am is saying this because we can teach it no you give the students an experiment and tell them to justify how the experiment is going on and you will find that the students are using especially the o labs here by amrita vishwapitham to explain how they conducted the experiment and then the students go far beyond because in a lab environment we are restricting them to what we have but here they go on far further than we would expect these are a few assessment tools that are there which are available again free online you've got edge elastic with existing questions and different types of questions you have multiple choice we have fill in the blanks you've got true and false but you can make each one of these a little different which we will talk about a little later through kahoot you can create your own games and these are a few apps that are available which can be used across the board for any subject whatsoever when you've got um something like mentimeter where you've got a poll to be conducted so you give them a question give them an answer and ask the students how many of you think this is right 
and there you've got a poll being conducted and the students want to be participating in it so you've got a very willing participative a child whom you're actually assessing with no idea of assessment actually going on i'm going to sum it up for you and leave the screen for you where i've given you a table of subject specific apps which is there and you can probably take a screenshot of it and as i end it just remember as teachers and educationists is it about the learning or is it about the score because scores really don't matter that much because the learning is more important than anything else yes yes i hope Mind that answered mr husain's question and gave him some tools to think oh i i am i am doubly and triply sure uh, almas and uh, sujit must be you know emboldened and you know led with lot of knowledge so many tools to be used so many apps to be used which are absolutely free and now we can just convert information into you no know, graphics and then comics i i understand students who have fear i think they will start come near you no know? the fear will go away they'll be very, <laughs> very near true. and then the deer all right it will become deer to them i'm i'm sure man <laughs> it's really trusting it's really very trusting. true yeah so uh, thank you very very much ma'am for this elaboration and my next question is uh, how do you keep your students engaged and it's a very upheaval task nowadays i mean we understand the way students attend classes and it's a very uh, back breaking task for a teacher to keep them engaged and motivated online so i mean how do you promote students voice and choice to help them become self directed learners actually nirish the fact that the student is sitting in front of a screen speaking with you and interacting with you the choice is already made and this was a technique that was initially adopted by these coaching institutes in kota where they would have 250 300 400 children there in a room with one teacher addressing them and screens were placed there but what i tell the teachers is that if a child is sitting in front of a screen for you it's very different you already have a willing learner you have a child who's made a choice to be there to be there with you you may argue that it's because the parents have asked them to be there and there are a lot of children who are just there for the attendance and then they say ma'am uh, network problems are there so i can't switch on the camera which is a standard excuse the students have but today's world is one of multitasking even now as i presented to you i'm speaking with you i was also doing my presentation we're all multitasking all the time and the students who do switch off their camera they're probably listening to what you are actually saying so to for the students to have a voice and to keep them involved and participative in the class if the teacher is using very interesting tools and the teacher is you know being a sage on the stage they don't want to listen to her the teacher is a guide on the side where she's showing these videos she's playing these games she's using technology to get them involved you will find that the students always want to be there and to ensure that the students are there a lot of parents say the teachers don't ask my child the question there's a wonderful little tool called flippity or a random name picker where you've got the spin wheel with all the students names on it and the moment you click on it it randomly spins and selects a student so everybody there is actually very attentive as to what if my name comes and what if i'm asked the question and if you ask the students that you design the game on on world wall you've got hangman and you've got these beautiful boxes that are there and you can put questions in them ask the students to design it so you'll find the students are always there i've classified the teachers as corona angels this time and the corona warriors are the doctors and the nurses and the frontline workers who are working but an angel takes you from one place to the other and makes life easier and comfortable for you just imagine what if the teachers hadn't been there what if the school system hadn't been there online how would these students have passed this year and a half yes. it's been traumatic for them but right. the one thing that has kept the children sane is meeting the teacher online coming face to face with them online recently the we had uh, been asked to stop uh, online classes because uh, of the second wave that was going on and we spoke with some of our parents and we asked the parents that look what will the children do so we are going to follow the government's orders and not teach the students as in but we're not going to stop the teaching 
the teachers are going to be there they'll continue teaching but in compliance with the government's orders post a particular date we will repeat all that we have taught you won't believe it but i had 90% attendance from the students so like you si- said do they have a voice and a choice yes the students have a choice and they've made it and the mere fact that they're sitting in front of you one to one where the teacher is there only for that one child because that's the one face on the screen and it's made it possible for them to survive this epidemic just by being there with you and with their classmates now there is a very important question which has come up uh, and uh, this is from puna mittal from city montessori inter college lucknow she wants to ask how to assess chapters where working of solution is very important like uh, you know uh, trigonometry identities gst equation online so if you can throw some light on it ma'am uh, definitely uh, punam this is something uh, you know when we are teaching equations to children uh, regardless of which class we are teaching them on unfortunately most of us decide to go top down so if i take the most simple one if i say 2x plus 3 is equal to 6 and you ask the students to explain this is the most basic algebraic exp- expression i'm using and you ask the children to solve it why not change it a little bit why not just give them if you have identities if you've got your physics where you've got and your chemistry where you're solving the equations and you're doing differentiation you prepare a worksheet where in a class if you if you are in a physical class you can work with rows if not then you can work online but with the students where you give a complex question you give the first line ask naresh to solve the second line ask punam to solve the third line and then build it up you will find that the students are not only keen to give the answers there are other students who are there who are wanting to find the fault and then you've got students wanting to do the best that they can so you can make it interesting you can also work backwards on equations you can have breakout rooms and give them little uh, four or five questions each for them to solve and change it rather than asking them have you come up with a solution have you got the answer ask them what problems did you find in trying to answer this question so here you will find problems that the students have faced and that is a higher order thinking skill rather than the assembly line one that here's a question i've solved it here's the answer we need children who are thinkers we need children who are researchers who will question and it is through tools and techniques like this that you can enable them to do these things beautiful ma'am beautifully explained uh, dear viewers i would like to reiterate you are listening to ms yashika bharatwaj from kr mangalam world school from vaishali if you would like to have more and more knowledge please do ask your question do share your question in the chat window and you can ask so my ma'am next question is now these classes are happening online so how can teachers cultivate positive relationship with their students and create a sense of class community also is incorporate collaborative and project based learning helpful in this challenging situation please share your thoughts on this ma'am uh, the teachers are already involved with the students uh, as as a part of the community as a part of the family I've always said that the home and the community and the teachers or the school the child is at the centroid of a triangle and we are the three vertices the community the school and the parents and if you look at the home school relationship the parents and the teachers we are riding a tandem bicycle where our goal is the same that is the welfare and development of the children now in this period as i mentioned in my when i was attempting to answer your previous question the students have been kept afloat of this pandemic afloat of seeing all the suffering around them only because of the teachers and the teachers have uh, devised methods to keep the children and the family involved far beyond just the academics for example when you had the world reading day or the world book day you had you asked the students to send us a picture or a small video of the entire family reading together and the yes. teachers have compiled yes. it into a video and shared it with the entire class okay. on world dance day they had a virtual flash mob so things like these you could do even now when the summer vacation is going on to keep the children engaged i've asked the teachers to send 
we send it collectively on our teachers group we send a pdf version of one amar chitra katha to the students every day and we encourage them to read it and to share that with their friends or share that with their parents and we ask the parents to encourage the students to talk about it to discuss it your online music sessions which are going on by your teachers who are your music teachers your dance teachers your performing arts teachers your visual arts teachers all these teachers can be involved your physical education teachers play a huge role in keeping the children involved and keeping the children happy because the whole family i have seen coming together doing those aerobic exercises or doing or practicing some kind of a game that the teacher would have given to the students and i think your uh, second question was related to project teaching if that is helpful or not you know we must understand that today's world is not a selfish world the boundaries of countries exist only on paper or of course when we need to take a passport or a visa to go across but otherwise the technology that we have has ensured that there are no barriers there are no boundaries so when you it is collaboration that is the key word that is going to hold good for the children of today and for the children of tomorrow for the citizens of this country collaborative work could come in any form when you ask the students to reach out to the community to help in the community to help the underprivileged one child will probably take the help of his friends and go on go about it together the cbsc has again come up with a young warrior movement that has come about now where does the base of all this come the base of all this comes in project based learning where you've got a topic you can give it to students and ask them to make groups ask the children to make groups or you can always create the groups by yourselves but whenever you're creating a group or whether you're creating a buddy pair please remember that you must have a variety of capabilities in that group if you have the top 4 students of a class put in one group and the bottom four put in another group you will find that there is a mismatch in capabilities it's like me playing uh, tennis against djokovic i wouldn't even be able to get the ball across the court so have a balanced group and ask the students this is the task that has been given to you put them in breakout rooms in an online world but in a face to face classroom you put them together work together when they work together you will find they come up with much better things they learn how to take on responsibility they learn how to take ownership they know how to objectively present and they learn how to work as a team to attain the best so project based learning is indeed fantastic way of imbibing the correct values even of citizenship in these young children in the school uh, a very wonderful example in a very easiest way of you no know, family i mean reading together that's that can be also used as a collaborative in project based learning so next question which has come up from uh, and i would like to club these questions uh, from deepa patil from ismail ismail sahib mulla law college from satara and the same question is grupa damodar is asking ma'am thank you very much for the excellent presentation you have talked about assessment of learning that is summarized at university level testing is more summative so what testing tools do you recommend at the university level i mean if you can talk about i'm it. i'm really really happy that this question has come about and i'm going to share with you i finished my schooling in the uk i did my grade 9 10 11 and 12 in the uk and i remember mrs rangel used to be my geography teacher and every time i would you know when we were here in india we were told this is your textbook this is the teacher who's taught it to you and this is a question and you need to reproduce and whenever i would go with, to her with a question this is in my senior class she would give me a c minus and i i was always an it's not meant to be a brag but i was an a plus student and suddenly i was getting a c minus and i was convinced the teacher did not like me and i'm very glad this question has come from a university perspective because i want to share with you how higher uh, learning actually was imbibed in the students at the class level and finally i mustered up enough courage and i went to her and i told her i said ma'am i'm convinced you don't like me she says why would you say that and i said because you keep giving me a c minus the maximum you've given me is a c or a c plus where is my b where is my a i'm not so bad and then she sat me down and she spoke with me that once you're in the sixth form once you're coming to grade 11 and 12 we need you to move away from the book we need you to move away from the fact that here is a question 
that Great. needs to be reproduced verbatim from the textbook which unfortunately is what is happening in our universities and our colleges now we want the students only to reproduce the answers we are not allowing them to go and think so yeah. when i presented her my next paper that i had done some research on i got a b plus i said why did i get a b plus and why not an a she says because even now you have done your research but you're picking up ideas and giving them here i want to know what you think and in a university or in a college i would really encourage the educationists of the higher institutions over here allow the children to think we have we are the youngest nation in the world but unfortunately we won't want these students to think out of the box we don't want them to come up with uh, with ideas of their own we just want them to say that if in this poem it says this is black and this is white this is black and this is white there are no there are other views of looking at it and we need yes assessment can be summative because you have to come to a score but you in the university or your college especially when you have your internal evaluation taking place can move beyond just coming into a room and simply rewriting the paper have a research work done on it if you are teaching them in english literature you are teaching them about wordsworth rather than give them four poems and ask them that this is what what is he talking about what is the simile what is the metaphor where is the uh, cynic the king this rather than that ask them do a background check why did wordsworth write the way he did so you've completely changed the assessment parameters here yeah yeah thank you very much ma'am i hope uh, guru rappa and deepa patel you must have got your answer and uh, so i would like to move to the next question ma'am and it is uh, you know very challenging uh, especially for the teachers i mean what are the most pressing concerns you hear from your you know staff and the school teachers uh, that they just talk about assessment they face these kind of challenges and problems if you could just i mean tell us something more about it well uh, like i mentioned at the opening statement that the teachers love to teach but they don't like to assess and they don't like to be assessed based on the yeah. assessment that yeah. they have conducted yes. so it's a bit bit of a catch 22 situation where what the teacher has taught needs to be assessed but the score that has been achieved the teacher doesn't want to use that score for herself so the teachers do not like to be graded based on the scoring that their students have got you know unfortunately what is happening is that when we teach the students a particular formula there's a wonderful video that is going about where there's a teacher who's teaching the students the table of nine using her hands uh, you know and fingers that nine fives are 45 well we've taught it to them we've me they've memorized it it's rote learning but i found that when students need to apply this to life they're not able to they're able to reproduce and create and answer the question on paper but not use it in life so the teachers when they have issues with assessment there are sometimes students who are not in the correct frame of mind uh, to be taking that assessment for example there may be a situation at home there must have been an unpleasant day at home the start of the day they may have had a fight with a student fight as in an argument or emotionally upset but yet in that one room in that 145 minute period they're supposed to reproduce the answers that are there we could have had an on time assessment too where a student can come and take the assessment as per his own we can have open textbook assessments too where the student has access to the material to be able to answer so for the teachers if you as a principal or a head teacher do not come down upon them like a head that these are your marks how have you got these marks these students have not performed it is your fault it is not the teacher's fault the teacher is doing her best there is no teacher in the world who stands in front of a class teaches administers a test wanting her or his students to fail all teachers want their students to be able to do their best so use the tool with your teacher use the score as an evaluation where you identify a minimum level of learning and a minimum level of learning normally is the average that you've taken plus or minus 2 and enable the teacher to convince the children that the competition is with your own self and it is small baby steps you take before you start actually sprinting so the child must if he's got let's say 10 out of 30 the next test encourage the child to get 20 on 30 
the CBSC had this wonderful system of continuous and comprehensive evaluation and it went on till grade 10 where a child actually had the facility or the recourse to improving his scores. In the primary classes, till the time the children are hitting the board classes, what prevents you teachers from utilizing this? If a child has got a particular score, have the confidence in yourself as a teacher to allow the student to question you. The student comes up to you and says, ma'am, as I went to Mrs. Randall, as I shared with you, that ma'am, this is what I wrote, this is the project I've done, please tell me what's wrong with it. Give the feedback. Once you've given the feedback, allow the child to take some time to improve upon his score on the project that he has undertaken. And there you'll find a child honestly and truly wants to improve upon his score and will come back to you several times to be able to get a higher score. And the same applies for the teachers. That assessment tool must be such that you as a head should strategize with your teachers as to what went right and what went wrong without pointing a finger that it is the teacher's fault because it isn't. Yeah. So I, I understand you're just now coming closer to the end time. And I would like to thank you, ma'am, for this insightful discussion. Could you please uh, share the takeaways from this session to our audience? I, uh, I think there's only one thing that I would like to share with you. It please. is the learning that is more important and not the marks. And I've been a CBSC counselor now for the past 13 years. And as I said, when we are counseling the students also, it is knowledge that is more important rather than the marks that you've got. And I put to you that if as a principal, I am interviewing two candidates, let's say both of them have done their masters in English. One got 78% in the masters in English and the other has got about, let's say 65% in the masters in English. But when I'm speaking with the candidates, the one with the 65% has more passion for the subject, has more passion for delivery. The communication skills are good. Whereas the one with the 78 or 80% was good at writing. Which candidate do you think I should take? So marks are not important. Marks are not the be all and end all of life. What is important is the child to have confidence that I know my strengths and the teachers are there helping them know their strengths. And it is those strengths and talents that are going to take the child forward, not the percentage that you're scoring in the marks. And you can't, it's, you can't have one size that fits all. And being a 99 percenter does not necessarily mean that you will be successful in life as compared to someone who's a 75 percenter who may have developed the latest mobile that folds up into a small little ball and opens up. So success cannot be determined by marks. Please remember that. Thank you very, very much, ma'am. And I'm doubly and triply sure, I mean, the way you have showed the energy, the knowledge, I mean, the children of your school must have been blessed by your kind presence and the people and the staff who are working with you. Hats off to you, ma'am. Thank and you it's so really much. a fantastic session. Uh, thank you everyone out there who has taken out time to be with us today. And if you have any more questions, you may post them on our channel. We will try our best to answer them soon we would like to see you in our much more insightful webinar and engaging discussion on 18th of june this coming friday on importance of social media in education please do join that session also dear participants there is a survey link of the channel at the end of this event please do fill in your comments and feedback and visit the channel to view much more exciting videos the link i have shared in the chat box so there is a link in the chat. Please do fill in your comments and feedback and visit the channel to view much more exciting videos. The link I have shared in the chat box. Dear all, I'm also sharing join a speaker link. You may please share and suggest this link among your fraternity and connect to come on the channel as a speaker. And at the end, a very big and special thanks to Ms. Yashika Bhargava's ma'am for you. taking out her valuable time for the session. We really enjoyed the session, ma'am. Thank you so much, Naresh. I enjoyed being with you and uh, sharing some of my thoughts with the educationists here. And thank you all, everyone, for sparing time to be with us here. Thank you. Thank you.